The last time that a buffalo was taken from anywhere near here was 131 years ago. The uh, Episcopal missionary, Reverend Roberts, who learned to speak both the Shoshone and Arapaho languages, uh, documented how many buffalo were taken by the tribal members. And after 1885, there was no more buffalo left for the tribes to take. So this is a you know, very momentous occasion to have them, to have those hooves hit the ground. Last night it really uh, finally hit home that, that they're back. And uh, lots and lots of our people are very excited. And very emotional to, to see these animals return to us. These buffalo right now are in this temporary holding uh, corral. And tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., these buffalo uh, will be released. This gate will be open. And during our ceremony, uh, the buffalo will return to uh, this chunk of land where they, they haven't been for well over 130 years. We got invited by Jason and said, hey, Shoshone tribe, we're, we got buffalo, we're going to release them. We got pasture, come on over. So we put in all the paperwork and we went, we went over there. I took the kids down to go see the buffalo being released because it's once in a lifetime that that's going to happen. You're not going to get another chance to do this. And so we said, we're going to go see the buffalo. As I said, there is nowhere in the world I'd rather be because I think what we're doing here today can actually create a ripple effect that spreads throughout the American West and hopefully beyond. Thank you very much. The song that was sung for the buffalo was uh, we were expressing to that buffalo that we love him. And it was a word song that included uh, how important they are to us. And so that song was, was a way to respectfully invite them out of that corral and onto their, their new, new landscape. My embracing the idea was originally from a wildlife standpoint. I believe buffalo are wildlife. Uh, I believe they have to have a place on the landscape. Uh, and then as time went on and I became familiar, more familiar with, with the tribes uh, and that kind of magical relationship between tribal people and buffalo, uh, I became driven to try to figure out how to help. When I had a chance to visit East Africa when I was 18, it was very significant because uh, we witnessed the wildebeest migration, which is today the largest ungulate migration in the world at one and a half million. But more significant is that that's just 5% of what the buffalo was uh, uh, here on this continent. We had our own Serengeti and we annihilated it as a means to uh, annihilate the native people who were here. Now, buffalo in Yellowstone and in national parks uh, are considered an icon. And actually, this Saturday, uh, buffalo is recognized as our national mammal. But we don't see them uh, on the landscape. That's unfortunate uh, that they're not considered wildlife. And they're considered livestock or a nuisance when they're outside of those protected areas. We're starting to make progress. There's still opposition. People are, 
are still concerned about bison from, from a, a grass consumption and a disease transmission point of view. But one of the things that the tribes have taught me over the years is patience. I got a good friend at Cheyenne River who says, we've waited a hundred years for our prayers to be answered. White people need to have that patience too. Finally seeing the culmination of 30 years of work and, and effort uh, uh, was, was very touching. Uh, and I think if I could have a snapshot in the future, I would like to be here 50 years from now just to see what it's like. It, it, will, <clears throat> it will be transformational, not only to the Shoshone and Arapaho people, but the other people in the community as well, because uh, there's nothing but good can happen as a result of this. One of the most important pieces in this story is the collaborative nature of the work and uh, National Wildlife Federation has been a key partner for the Shoshone tribes on bison and many other issues for decades and the tribe needs uh, needed that extra assistance. Um, National Wildlife Federation brought additional biologists, ad additional organizers, legal assistance and it's this has been a long time in coming but we but they brought many many uh, experts in to help answer questions and relieve some of the concerns that the tribes have had. And so um, I think it's really important to remember that National Wildlife Federation has been there almost since day one. And I don't think this would have happened without the National Wildlife Federation. <laughs>